Hey witches, so I'm going to talk about one of my favorite types of magic and it's just because it's kind of fun to do and you should not do it just for the hell of it. You should have a reason, but when you do have a reason, you can whip out that baneful magic to get revenge on someone that has wronged you. So, I thought I would start by talking about what baneful magic is. It's any magic that causes misfortune to the target. So, it could be anything from a binding, from binding them, from doing a certain behavior, to banishing them, to getting them the hell away from you. You could do doom work. You could do return to sender work, justice work, all of those different things. But we'll talk about all the different types of baneful magic you can do in a second. So if you're not careful, some energy can bounce back to you. Okay. You don't want that to happen. So you want to make sure you're protected and that your vibrations are high so if your vibrations are low and you haven't been working in protection you don't need to do anything baneful even if it's warranted even if somebody hurts you beyond you know they raped you or beat you you still can't do this and expect no backlash if your vibrations are low your aura is not strong or if you have not been working in protection work, you need to do that. that. Like I said in my witchy video, Witchcraft for 101 for my beginners, protection magic should be the very first magic you work on because it's just important. So make sure you do that. So we're going to talk about the difference between the threefold law because a lot of us are Wiccans or eclectic and... A lot of us believe in that. I believe in it some. I don't think everything, like if I do a doom candle, I don't believe that my life is going to fall apart immediately after because if, I've, if I'm mad enough to light a doom candle on someone, I am ready to do that and I know that it is warranted. I'm not worried about it. But there's a difference between the threefold law and karma. So the threefold law is basically just like what you put out there, the energy can return to you and influence your daily life here on earth in this life. Okay? Karma is a collection of all past experiences and the pa this life, the past life before that, the life before that until you reach ascension. If you believe in reincarnation, if not, your thoughts are going to be a little bit different, but those are the differences. So that's just a very watered down, <laughs> very quick little explanation of the differences. Um, I'll probably do a whole video on karma at some point because it is interesting. But just for the sake of this video, we'll keep that part short and sweet. So, it's a great idea to perform some kind of divination before committing to this level of work. You might pull a tarot card and just ask the question before you pull it. Should I light this doom candle? Should I curse this person? And just get a message and see what it says because it might not be in your best interest even if they hurt you. So it, it, it never hurts to do that. So when you are doing your protection, one thing I always do, and you've seen me do this if you've seen me do any of my, any baneful work before on video, which I don't do often, but if you have a, say, a jar candle going for one reason or another, and it's a baneful candle, you want to have a white jar candle burning right beside it. You can anoint it with protection herbs, protection oil, or just say a little prayer over it right on the glass protection, just so it's there to kind of absorb any negativity that doesn't go where it's supposed to go. And whenever you do any type of baneful magic it needs to be when the target is asleep and the best day for this kind of work is mars 
okay? It's Mars, so that's on a Tuesday during the hour of Mars. If you're banishing someone, that would be best done on a Saturday night during the hour of Saturn. But anyway, some other things you can do for protection. Kind of got off topic there. <laughs> you can wear your protection talisman. Um, make sure you charge it monthly. And also do monthly protection spells on yourself. Especially if you're doing a lot of baneful magic. Because you really shouldn't overdo it. You need to kind of take, you know, really discriminate what situations you think warrant this type of, this level of magic. Because, you know, the more you put out there, the more likely you are to receive some type of negative energy back at you. Even if you're the most protected person in the world, you're doing this stuff every week, it's going to catch up with you. But one thing I like to do, in addition to the other things I said for protection, is whenever I'm doing any type of, we'll just say curse, we'll just say curse from now on. If I'm going to do a curse or a hex or something like that on someone, I will tie a white ribbon around my wrist. And then I will tie, and I keep them tied, but white ribbons around the entrances to my home I just feel and they're dipped in my homemade protection oil and I've kind of blessed them and then tie them on there and they there they stay so those are a good thing to try out if you haven't done the ribbons before also salt you can make protective barriers whatever room you have your baneful altar in you should have a spot specifically for this type of work always you don't want to do your money spells in the same place that you lay down curses. <laughs> you don't want to do that. You don't want to mix those energies. So um, it's good to have an altar for that. And then you can kind of just put salt around it or put salt in the door frame along the door on the carpet. Just so no nothing can cross over. None of that negativity. You can smudge the room when you're finished, which you definitely should do. And also take a cleansing shower or bath when you finish. Play positive music. Get out your bells. Sing. Get out your singing bowls. Clap. But make sure the windows are open so that negative energy has somewhere to go. Now, if you mess up and somehow conjure up a negative spirit... They're not as easy to get rid of, so you want to be very careful who you're calling in to help you and be very mindful of your state of mind during the times you are doing baneful work. So, the types of baneful work that you can do. So, you can do the following. Curses, hexes, control and domination work. Doom candles, return to sender, justice work, revenge work. And you can do this with candle magic, sour jars, poppets, or you can just do a petition along with the photo of the target and burn those together. And then maybe mix them with some black pepper in the palm of your hand and blow it off your property. You can do that, but I really love to do the candles. One reason why is because you can read the candle, the glass. If you're using a glass candle, you can read the glass afterward. And it's really interesting to see the glass of the baneful candle and compare it to the glass of your protection candle and see how they're the different, how they're different and how they're the same. Because I have had some funky burns on my protection candles. And it shows to me that it's working. But it, it just looks odd. You'll have to look back at my Doom Candle update, update video to get a look at that if you haven't seen it yet. So let's see. The types of candles that you can get. You can get glass and case candles that will already be ready. Like your Doom Candles, your Do As I Say Candles, Domination Candles, Bend Over Candles. STFU. All of those hoodoo style candles are already ready for you. A lot of them already come with the oils and herbs in them. I always like to add extra 
and I will include an entire link of all the crystals and all the correspondences for Baneful Magic in the description. I'm not going to spend time going over those. So, you can also have um, taper candles and just use the correct oil and other correspondences. You don't have to have a jar candle. You can also use a skull candle and hollow out the top and fill it with some of those herbs, rub it down with oil and light it. And you can also use figure candles to do a baneful working on someone. You could do breakup magic with two um, figure candles back to back. You can even buy them that way. But like I said, think twice before you do your baneful work. It also helps if you have a tag lock of the person if you can't get any of their bodily fluids or clippings of any type, you can use a photo or something they have wrote on, a piece of their clothing, maybe a pencil that they use, something they touched. There's a lot of options, but you need something, at least a photo, and you're going to need their name, their full name, and their birthday. Very important. And I think that's about all. I think that's about all I had to say. You can call in deities to work with you, but make sure that it's somebody you have a relationship with. Don't just go, you know, trying to reach out to someone for the very first time to do a baneful working. It's just not good practice. It's not going to be the end of the world, but it's always good to build up a relationship with a deity before you go asking them for stuff. That's just my two cents on that. But that's all I have, which is, and blessed be. Like, subscribe, and share. See you soon. Bye.